These are the absolute bare minimums that I expect of every single guy. Make sure you watch this whole video. Let's dive straight into it. Number one, working out three to five times a week. You have to be health conscious. It all starts with health. Health is wealth, as you've probably heard countless times. If your health isn't in order, other areas of your life are most definitely not going to be in order. You're not going to enjoy the money to its full capacity if you're morbidly obese. Every aspect of your life will suffer. You'll be out of breath walking up the stairs on a plane. You'll need to get two seats instead of one. I mean, it's a nightmare. Take care of your health. Eat a nutritious diet. Nothing wrong with indulging in some burgers and fries and milkshakes from time to time. Nothing wrong with that. But you need to get your body moving. Lift some heavy shit. It does something to you, man. It takes care of obviously your physical health, but also your mental health. You knowing you can lift a heavy piece of metal. It's, uh, it's the animalistic instinct in us. It's almost like, wow, I can do that. What else can I do? Right? So lift heavy shit. Another thing that I would recommend is walking around. Try and get 10,000 steps in every single day, which is only about an hour and 45 minutes, I think, of walking. Bare minimum, man. Most guys can do that. Break it up. You know, maybe do an hour in the morning and then 45 minutes in the, in the evening. You can do that. But it's actually shocking that most guys don't get anywhere near probably four or 5,000 steps a day because they drive everywhere. They're fat bastards. Lazy. Get out, get out of your car, park it up somewhere, and walk. Be amongst nature. Listen to the sound of the birds. Some, sometimes people may be calling your name, but because you're walking around with your headphones plugged in, you don't hear them. So, you know, you can have maybe one AirPod in and the other ear you, you listen. You need to be aware of your environment, your surroundings. Or just take them off altogether. That's even better. Go for a walk, man. A lot of great ideas come to me when I'm walking. I reflect and ponder over things. Okay, so that's the first thing. And the second thing which ties into it is sleeping eight hours a day. I used to have a poor relationship with sleep because I used to follow all these motivational pages on Instagram back when I was 21, 22. And those pages would say, oh, sleep is for the weak, sleep is for the dead or for the broke. And it's like, no, that's a terrible mindset. You need your eight hours of sleep, gentlemen to function at your most optimum you need those hours you do eight hours and i'm not a sleep expert but i will make a video on what i've recently learned about sleep but it's a lot more important than what a lot of us guys think and i know some people will comment and say well i only need four trust me you're doing yourself a lot of damage in the long run if you're not sleeping your eight hours, okay? You may still function, but you trust me, you're not functioning to the absolute optimum. Treat yourself like an athlete. You know, Ronaldo invested in a sleep doctor to help him improve his relationship with sleep and to ensure that he functions at an even higher level. Now, I'm not saying that you're gonna invest in a sleep doctor and you're gonna need a bit of money to do that, right? But sleep is very important. Make sure you're getting your eight hours. The next bare minimum is correct posture and a firm handshake. I see a lot of guys sat like the hunchback of Notre Dame, like that, right? Poor posture, looking down all the time. Your neck, man, give your neck a break. You're constantly like, come on, man, look up. Right, and when you meet somebody and they offer their hand, give them a firm handshake. Or when you walk into a room and you know you don't know anybody, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Ali, nice to meet you. Extend your hand and give a firm handshake. The amount of guys that I've met in my life with poor handshakes is concerning. And I think there's been studies done on the pressure of handshakes over the years. You know, the pressure of a handshake when it comes to men has dropped significantly over the years. It's like, what are you scared of, man? Now, don't crush someone's hand. 
and every last bone in their hand. No, but apply some more horsepower to it, man. Right? Firm handshake and good posture. When you're walking, head up. Right? Don't be walking with your phone like that constantly everywhere. Now, look up, man. Okay, so posture is very, very important. The next bare minimum is keeping your word and being dependable. One of the most furiating sights is a guy that, you know, says he's going to do something, but he doesn't do it. He's not dependable. He's not reliable. That guy will not go far in life and he will tarnish a lot of his relationships with people. You know, part of being a man is you say something and your words have meaning. You say you're going to be there at 10, you're there early. And that's actually my next point. I'll touch on that in a second. You say you're going to help your friend move houses, you help your friend move houses. You say you're going to introduce your friend to somebody who could help them with their business, you do that. Your words need to mean something. You promise your wife something, you fulfill that promise. Because over time, if you're just talking and you're not following through with action, people will lose respect for you. And if they're in your life, such as your wife, for example, she will resent you. She will. And that will inevitably lead to a divorce or a horrible relationship, which then in most cases leads to a divorce, right? Your words need to mean something. If you know you can't fulfill something, then don't say you can. Don't sort of half say it. Yeah, I might be able to. No, you're either able to or you're not. It's that simple, right? The next point, which I touched on just now, is being early. Being early. And I haven't put being on time for a reason. Because if you're on time, you're actually pretty late. If your interview starts at 10 and you show up at 10, you're not on time, you're late. So be somewhere early. Now, obviously, I'm not saying, you know, put up a tent the night before and stay there overnight. No. But if you have an interview at 10, you know, be at the place by half nine, latest quarter to 10. Because you might get lost, you might not know where the office is exactly. So you've got to give yourself some time in case you get lost, confused, right? You need somewhere to park. Some places don't have good parking around them. So you have to park somewhere else and you have to walk it, right? You've got to be early, man. You have to be. And people respect that as well, by the way. You know, oh, you're here early. I mean, over the years, some of the interviews that I've been to, I'm always early. And, uh, you know, when I go there, they're like, oh, you're early. And it's like, oh, okay, come through now, you know. They admire it. And they almost always thank me for coming early as well. And so being early is absolutely the bare minimum for us. It really is. It's not even something we should celebrate. Oh, wow, yeah, no. Being early is the bare minimum. Your friend wants you to help him move houses. He said, beat her at six. Don't show up at quarter past or, you know, it's not, it's not respectful. It really isn't. Because what it communicates is that you don't respect this person's time. If somebody tells you to be somewhere for six and you don't show up at six, you still have a quarter past, half past. And I, in this case, it's very important for you guys on the other side of this. So if you told your friend to be there at six and he shows up at half six, you've got to check your friend. Bro, what's going on? I told you to be here at six. It's half six now. Don't just let it slide and, oh, okay, bro, no worries. You know, you got to check your friend. Yo, what's going on? I told you to be here at six. Because otherwise, people will just disrespect your time. They'll do whatever they want. Ah, he'll wait. He'll be there waiting. Nah. And if you're waiting for a friend and he, he's still not there an hour later and he hasn't texted you any good reason, just get on with it yourself or go to the place that you wanted to go to. Don't wait. Because it signifies that you don't respect your time as well. Nah. Carry on your life. Make your own arrangements. Don't wait for this person. All right. Same thing for women that you take out on a date. If they're not there 
by the time that you set, let's say you were supposed to meet for brunch at two o'clock, let's just say, and 20 past, quarter past two comes and she's still not there and she hasn't texted you, bro, just order, eat, leave, or just leave the place altogether, go somewhere else. Don't sit around waiting. She comes in half an hour later, oh, hi, you know, she doesn't respect your time, bro. If she really wanted to see you, she would have been there early. Don't fall for the, oh, I just, just a new place for me, or I don't, nah. Because believe me, if someone like Drake was there, she'd be there early, right? She wouldn't come in late. Oh, sorry, Drake. Nah, she'd be there early. So you got to respect your time. Okay, but going back to what I was saying, be early to places. Bare minimum, bare minimum. The next point, this is going to make some of you crack up a little bit. Wash your ass with water. Wow. Revolutionary information, right? It shouldn't be. It's the fucking bare minimum. Get some water, H2O, and spray the fuck out your ass. Because tissue alone ain't going to cut it. If you wipe only with tissue, there's still going to be shit stains hugging your ass cheeks. Use water. And then you can dry with tissue afterwards. Right, but there needs to be moisture going on over there. That's how you get rid of the smell. Because if you don't, it sticks on there and you'll stink as shit. And your boxes will be fucking laced with shit as well. So wash your goddamn ass, okay? The next point is cleaning your car and your bedroom on a frequent basis. Those are the two environments that you probably spend a lot of your time. If not most of your time, right? Of course, your bedroom, you sleep in it eight hours at least, right? And your car, you spend a lot of time in, especially if you commute to and from work every single day. Those two environments need to be clean, right? It reflects you in a positive manner. Now, obviously, some of you aren't going to be bringing people to your bedroom, all right? But people that get in your car, they shouldn't open the door and then there's Burger King wrappers everywhere and a empty bottle of coke and come on man that shows that your life's a mess you can't even take care of your car bro my car is pristine and clean it smells glorious on the inside it reflects me i take care of myself you know i'm well dressed which is my next point right and so it's very important remember everything affects everything if you're not disciplined with your hygiene you're not going to be disciplined with how you clean your room, how you clean your car, everything's gonna be a mess. So don't underestimate something as menial as just having your car clean. You might think, oh, but it's just my car. Nah, it's not just your car, it's what, your neglect is gonna seep into other areas of your life. But you being disciplined when it comes to cleaning your car, cleaning your room, those positive qualities are gonna impact other areas of your life. Right, your attention to detail. The next point is dressing well. Now I get it. Not everyone wants to wear a suit. I, that's fine. But for goodness sakes, don't be walking around with tracksuits all day, every day, hoodies, and what, what those fucking ski masks that are now trending. I don't get why they're trending. It looks fucking goofy as hell. Grown men walking around with ski masks during the day, coupled with those big puffy jackets or those tracksuits. What are you doing, mate? You're not skiing. Take it off. It looks silly. You look like an egg walking around. Take it off, man. Show your face. You should be well-groomed, right? Good haircut. Right? You don't get a second chance at a first impression, fellas. You really don't. You've got to dress well and you've got to smell good as well. Apply some fragrance. Invest in a nice fragrance collection. Over time, not necessarily all in one go. Occasionally, spend $70, $80, get yourself a new fragrance. And then when you really want to treat yourself, get yourself some of the niche luxury fragrances, which will be worth every penny, believe me. Believe me, so strongly, right? But invest in a nice fragrance collection, man. People associate the way that you smell with a certain experience as well. If a woman knows that you smell good, she'll be like, man, there was this one guy, 
every time I'm around him, he's always smelling good and it's, it's, it's a positive thing. It uplifts people around you. It really does, man. You know, when I walk and I notice that somebody smells good, I'm like, damn, bro, that's, that's good. That's good stuff right there. You know, you get that scent trail following you. You're like, beautiful, man. That's beautiful stuff. So smell good, dress well. You could attract opportunities in the form of potentially a romantic partner. Believe me, women are going to be much more likely to turn their heads if you smell good than if you don't. Same thing applies to the way that you dress. If you dress well, you're going to stand out. I mean, most guys don't wear suits nowadays other than for work. And even then they complain and nag like little girls. I don't want to wear it. It's uncomfortable. Have you ever heard James Bond say that? I don't want to wear the suit. It's uncomfortable. Work hard. Get yourself a good suit. But suits are a timeless attire. They really are. Okay, the next point is paying for a date. It is the absolute bare minimum, fellas, for you to pay for a date. When you take a woman out, you're taking initiative in organizing the location, the place, the time. You're not going to go through that, sit down, have some food, and then say, well, you're, you owe me, or you pay 17, I'll pay. Nah, we're not going to do that. That's goofy. If you take a woman out for a date, you pay for the damn date. Otherwise, you're not ready to date. If you can't justify spending 20, 30 pounds, let's just say for coffee and cakes, or if you take her out to a, a restaurant, if you can't justify spending 70, 80, 90 pounds, then you're not ready to date. You're, you're just not. You're just not. And don't give me this, oh, well, I'm a man and I know my value nowadays. Bro, it's a traditional masculine quality to lead, to organize a time, a place, to sit down. And even if you don't particularly like the girl towards the end of the day, or you don't really get on, you pay for the date and you keep it moving. We don't live in scarcity. Oh, but no, I didn't like that date. So now I'm going to ask her to pay me, you know, half. You owe me. Nah, we're not going to do that. That's goofy. Pay for the whole fucking bill and keep it moving. All right, fellas. And last but not least, as a bare minimum, working hard. I mean, come on. That isn't, that isn't something that we should celebrate. Hard work should be part of who you are. If you're not known for being a hard worker, you're doing it wrong. If you're doing just enough to get by, that's going to seep into other areas of your life. Remember, fellas, everything affects everything. If you're the bare minimum kind of guy at your job, you're going to be the bare minimum kind of guy when it comes to your own business, your own endeavors. You're going to do just enough to make a little bit of money, but not enough to conquer, to be the best in your, in your craft, in your industry. Somebody else is going to be working harder than you, way harder, and they're going to go way further. The question becomes, how far do you want to go? If you want to go really far, like you say you do, well, then fucking work hard. Right? Shouldn't be something that we celebrate. Oh, wow, you worked hard today. No, it's the damn minimum. If you want to succeed, if you want to go far in life, you've got to work hard. You do. Now, working smart also comes into the equation. But a lot of lazy guys will use the, well, I'm working smart as an excuse. You're not. Because you're not even doing anything. You're not. The hours aren't being put in. You need to put in the hours, bro. You do. The way you become better in front of camera is by speaking in front of camera frequently. You've got to put the hours in. You can't replace that with some AI or some bullshit, right? You've got to be in front of the camera. You've got to communicate on a regular basis. This applies to anything that you want to succeed in. All right. So hopefully this video provided you guys with some value. If it did, make sure you give it a like. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.